Hey guys, John here. So, you know, I thought I would just go over how to install a snorkel on a 60 series very briefly. I used a three and a quarter inch hole saw. See, three and a quarter inch, in case you don't believe me. Uh, from what I've read, it's usually recommended that, that you use a three and a half inch. There's no reason to have a bigger hole than three and a quarter. Watch this. Put it in. Fits perfect. Okay. Now, the other issue with the, the templates that they give you is there's three holes. Do not drill this hole. It, it will end up hitting the bracing on the inside of the fender. In addition, if you drill this third hole, you have to literally like put <laughs> 200 pounds of force. I was going to try and come up with something clever, but you pretty much have to hip check the snorkel into the fender because there'll have to be a gap like this. So look at this. If there's a third hole here, first of all, you'll run into the brace. I have it sitting flush right now. Now look underneath the gap that there is. See, there's about a half inch gap up in there. You can see my face through the crack almost. So you would basically be forcing the plastic in anyways. That third hole is not necessary. Okay, so three and a quarter inch hole. Two holes is all you need. Now, for this part, the last snorkel I did, which was 12 years ago, I did the two holes. No issues with it coming loose, by the way. I did rivets, but this time I'm gonna do riv nuts. So, I fit it to the fender with the studs installed, everything installed nice and tight. And then I have my bracket installed here. And then I basically center the bracket on the frame of the truck here. If you wanna just come behind me here for a second. So basically once, once you have it centered, the holes, the holes centered, I just take a, a pick and I scribe the holes with the pick. I am just going to do two holes for now. I think with um, rib nuts should be more than strong enough if there's two. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to center punch those holes. Where did I leave it? Oh, it's on the other side here. You can use the old fashioned center punch where you hold it and hammer it or a spring loaded one. So get the center of your hole, center of the circle. Make sure you're dead centered. And then once you're happy with that, you can give it another shot. And uh, I guess you probably want to see me drill it too, don't you? So we'll start with a small drill bit. Should probably be wearing safety glasses, right? Exciting stuff, hey? It's always nice to have a sharp drill bit. I'm getting close. Yep, okay, so there's one. Next one. Good.
Okay. Got my container of rib nuts here, nut certs, whatever you want to call them. So these are the ones we're going to use. These are for an M6, M6 bolt. Okay. So these containers, by the way, if you live in Canada, Princess Auto, really happy with these containers. Okay, so now we need to figure out what size hole to use for this guy. Uh, we want to use a drill bit. Obviously that's not too big because we want this to be a very close fit. Okay, so I'm going to hunt around, find the right drill bit, and then we'll keep the video going. So if you're unsure of what size hole to drill for these guys, you can take some calipers. Measure the spline part, 9.84 millimeters. Now obviously the drill bit's gonna make a hole that's 8.3 millimeters, so that gives us a bit of leeway. We can always use a round file and make the hole a little bit bigger after. So I wanna be safe, so I'm gonna use that one. Um, this is a 3.8 drill bit which I use for these holes. And you see this doesn't even fit in there. So I'm probably fine with the 3 8 Yeah, the 3 8 is gonna be small too, but kind of like being a carpenter. Measure twice and cut once, if that makes any sense. <laughs> no mistakes. We don't want any mistakes here, so we're going to drill twice if we have to. We'll start with this guy. And remember when you're drilling with a big bit, it should be slow speed. And use some cutting fluid if you have some. It's always painful to drill into your Land Cruiser. See how the battery's doing. We're okay. Almost through. They lighten up on the pressure. What can happen with the thin sheet metal sometimes is the larger drill bits will grab and they'll just snag the metal and kind of start and kind of rip it apart a little bit. So when you feel like you're just about through, back off the pressure. Sometimes it helps to even speed up the drill bit a little bit. Not a bad looking hole. Okay. See, definitely way too small. That's okay. That's okay. Next one. What does the peanut gallery think? Never want to rush. Take it slow. Okay, that's hole number two. Nicely done. So, now, of course, you're not going to have to wait 12, 24 hours to see these get installed because you're watching a video and that's the beauty of editing. But just want to let you know, I'll enlarge these holes a bit more. We'll get these to fit. 
but we're not going to install them because we have bare metal here. And so I want to treat the bare metal with some primer before these get installed. Sometimes if you're too aggressive, one step forward may be too many and you have to take a bunch step back. So that's probably pretty good there. Anyways, <laughs> you guys get the idea. Then we'll tap it in once it's painted and everything and uh, we'll show you the rest of the installation. But once those are in, it's pretty easy, right? Just slap the snorkel on, put your washers and nuts on. I'm going to use stainless steel hardware so nothing rusts and you don't get rust streaks coming down all over the place. And I think two of these is enough. Um, I could always drill a third hole and do another one, but you know what? We'll see how it goes. We'll do two. And then I bought some rubber washers that I'm going to put underneath the plate to ensure that there's a good seal around this and the water can get into the groove. You could always put some sealant around here as well too. Um, anyways, so yeah, we'll finish this up and continue on. Got my first rib nut installed. These are M6 rib nuts. I'm just gonna do two because I think this will be more than strong enough. Uh, the snorkel kits typically come with three little rivets. So anyways, what I'm gonna do, Put the other one in. I'm going to cut the inside diameter of this washer out to match this so it sits around this completely and then the plate will go on top and then this should provide a good seal from moisture going in. So yeah I'm going to get this one in position now and squeeze. Probably enough. Now it needs to be squeezed a bit more, so. Okay, so I'm just squeezing this a little bit more. You don't want to overdo it. Start ripping things apart here. I find these little handheld ones are quite good for obviously small stuff. For bigger stuff, you're going to want the larger red nut installers. So. You can see the threads look like they're about the same depth on each of them. This one uh, could maybe be crushed a hair more. Uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'll wind this in to this one. all the way and then pull up on this a little bit more that's pretty tight I can't really I don't want to force it any more than that so wind this back out and if at some point I feel this isn't strong enough I can always drill a third hole but that's it so Cut these washers out, get everything ready to install, and then we'll, we'll put it in. So I was going to use, I was going to use a single hole punch to kind of enlarge the hole, but you know what? Good old round file, it works perfectly. So you see the, see the difference here? So this is where we were sitting before, right? If I put this on top of the riv nut, it's going to sit extra high in the middle, which we don't want now so you see that one sitting like that right come at this angle maybe okay and then this one basically sits pretty much perfectly over top I might enlarge it a little bit more in this video I'm just doing a quick test fit to make sure everything fits correctly before I install the bracket on the snorkel hey guys 
it is quite windy here, so hopefully you can hear me okay. I just wanted to do a wrap-up video to the snorkel install. I did want to film us actually installing the snorkel, but we kind of got carried away and just installed it without filming. As you hopefully remember from earlier in the video, I mentioned not to drill the third hole. You're only going to drill two holes to bolt the snorkel to the fender. So something else to take note of when you're installing your snorkel. If you remove the antenna, it'll help with installation. This is the newer template that they give you. So you basically line it up with the fender. Obviously I can't line it up with the top edge of the fender right now because the snorkel's installed. But you're gonna to need to cut this section out if your antenna is there. Otherwise it's gonna get in the way. So that's what I did on this older template. On a, this is for a snorkel I installed 12 years ago on my other Land Cruiser. I just cut a hole out to go around the antenna so you don't need to remove the antenna. And then I basically found the center point, or this template actually gives you the center point hole for the hole saw hole. I don't think this one did, but I can't remember. But basically line the template up and you want to make sure that you can, you can see down where the, the snorkel goes in, underneath there, it should just be up above where the fender starts to curve. About, you can kind of see the, the curve line there. You don't want to drill the hole or have your hole saw hit the curved part of the, the sheet metal. So. Hopefully that helps you a little bit with the template. I'm just going to put this in the truck here. Now on this particular install, we did do the, the two rev nuts with it, which I think you saw me install. And then under the rev nuts, we ended up doing two rubber washers. And I used stainless steel hardware. Now. When I did my snorkel install on my own 12 years ago on my other truck, I ended up taking the fender off because I found it was really hard to get the hose on the, the plastic on the inside here and to get the hose clamp in place. But this time we didn't actually have to take the fender off because my assistant, Michael, who's helping me right now with the filming, he's got really long arms and uh, he managed to get his arms in there and get the clamp on and everything. So that saved a lot of time. So I'm gonna open up the hood and Mike is going to explain how he installed the hose and the hose clamp on the snorkel without us actually having to remove the whole fender. Okay, so in order to bolt the fender to the snorkel, Basically, you need to remove the washer reservoir and then you can easily put your hand in there and put the washer and the nut on the two studs on the snorkel and tighten it up. Now, in order to install the hose on the snorkel, you're obviously going to leave the reservoir off so you can access the hose on the hose clamp. But I'm going to let Mike explain how he, how he did it here. So basically, we start off with disconnected this air filter and just moved it aside for a bit and I was able to reach into one of these access holes here and extend the adjustable hose and able to then just weasel it into the other access port right here. The same goes for uh, us attaching it to the actual snorkel. I was able to get my hand in here and reach all the way there together with my other hand and uh, marry them together. Um, we did use some kind of a lubricant just to help us slide the hose onto the plastic parts and also onto the air filter here just to make it a little bit easier. Yeah we used some 
silicone spray. Hey guys, hopefully you found this snorkel installation video useful. If you did, please like it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.